that's what we're riding to today. So we are here at the park, live, just beautiful. Ooh, you guys, check that out. Holy crap, do you see that? Wow, that to me, what does that look like to you? I'm not even gonna say what it looks like to you. What does that look like to you? Wow, amazing, you guys. Hey, so good morning. Here we are, it took me a few minutes to get here. Thanks for riding along. So we're talking about the constriction. I have to keep my eyeglasses on because I am in the middle of that sun beam there. Um, try to give you a nice little background here. So you have something else to look at other than me. Um, let me grab my tripod too. So anyway, the constriction and the release, right? So when you get into this release stage, you know, all of a sudden clarity comes in, you get the direction um, that comes in. And then for some of you right now, if you're kind of like working with me or doing my work or following me or you're in my zone, if you will. So I'm getting my selfie stand here so we can talk a little bit more clearer. Then you're probably coming up up against things like surrender. What is that? How do I do that? You know, like getting that message, trust the process, let go, all of that stuff, right? And... The thing that I hear most, there we go, hi guys, good morning, the thing that I hear most from my clients and the people that I work with is, I don't know how to do that, which is ironic, isn't it? Because we're like in this business, doing this work, helping people shift beliefs and patterns and telling them to trust the whole time. In the meantime, it's like, well, how do you do that? So and that's what I've been kind of working on, not working on, but I've been doing this whole year, right, 2021, and finding those pieces, those tools. Sorry, you guys. Even my selfie stand doesn't want to help me out this morning. Here we go. <laughs> finding those tools of trust. And it's been really interesting right because and this is what I really wanted to come on and say or talk to you guys about if you ever want to have a conversation about it is how fascinating and interesting is it ouch that healers like workers coaches who do kind of like the spiritual end of things <laughs> That we're all being asked to trust, and some of us are like, I don't know how to do that, right? It's kind of a loxy more on you. It's kind of like, well, how do we do that? I'm not really sure. And it's, it's fascinating to me, actually. It's not that we're not doing anything wrong or we're teaching something that um, we don't know how to do or anything like that. None of that goblin, mind goblin bullshit. It's just... We're getting it on a deeper level, right? It's kind of like we've been doing this for years. You know, you believe in whatever it is that you believe in, but you've been doing this work for many years. And even though, and this kind of helps us understand our clients a little bit better as well, even though you've been doing this for years, there's some aspects. How do we do that? How do we trust? How do we surrender? Especially when it comes to money. It's like whenever it is that comes like to relationships or it comes to clients or attracting things or making things synchronistic, we're probably really good at that. Like we can really absolutely do that. But when it comes to money, how do we dive in and surrender and trust on that level, right? Because when it comes to money, there are added stressors that come with it, right? Added, I'm going to say stressors, but it's really attachments that come with it, right? So what are some of those attachments? You know, I have to make a certain amount this month to make the rent. I have doctor's bills. I have a trip I want to take. I have, um, you know, a school trip that I need to pay for my kids or I want to go on vacation, right? 
so there's a lot of whew, there's a lot of attachments that go along with that. So how do we let go and surrender even deeper in those situations when we have? Sorry, I can't get this to stand straight. When we have these, you know, desires to to have a certain thing at a certain time, right? How do we open up the energy to it? Because the more we think about it, the more we attach to it, and the more we take action to try to try to control the outcome of it, is closing off the actual ability for it to flow to us. So it's kind of like an oxymoron, right? So then nothing happens. So we sit back and we go, okay, what do I need to do to make it happen? Right now we have our ego control hands into the pie here. And then we start doing things. And so I've been seeing this a lot on Facebook. We start doing things like, um, um, free trainings left and right, like, like one after the other, after the other, after the other, I actually witnessed, um, another healer coach who I was working with go into massive burnout, massive burnout because of that. She was offering free training. And I don't mean like a free training. I mean like three, five and seven and 10 day events for free. Right. And it's really funny because I remember saying, oh, yeah, you know, this is good for me because, you know, I'm getting all of this information. But I could literally sense on the live stream, like her energy just draining, just like like she had nothing to give. Um, it's like it was just it made me tired. You ever have that when you're here watching someone else and like you're getting tired because you're empathing their tiredness? She was like totally wiped out. Um, and I asked myself, you know, why? why? Why do we do that? Why do we overextend ourselves to the point where we're so tired, but we still feel the need to get on here and do things that actually exhaust us, which is the complete and total opposite of what any kind of money manifesting program would actually teach or tell you. And there were two things that were at play here. And it's number one, you know, it's how do you manage your energy? What are you attached to? Like, what what is the goal? Right? Are you trying to make a certain amount of money by the end of the month? Are you um, seeking some other secondary benefit through exhausting yourself, or can you just receive? And it's not even receive, it's allowing, right? Can we just allow, look how pretty that is. You guys, let me share this with you. Can we just allow things to flow into our experience? Look at that. I don't know. Oh, it doesn't zoom in. All right. Well, that's what I'm looking at. Can we just allow things to flow into our experience? That is the big question, Right? The other thing I see a lot of people do is all of a sudden, everything's on ridiculous sale. Not because, you know, oh, it's sale time or whatever. They're getting rid of old projects. I mean, like, doing top quality work that's probably worth at least a couple of thousand dollars was, um, you know, something ridiculous. Join us for, I don't know, 222 for 21 days. Like, why? Why? I mean, why? Is that something that's inspired to do? Is that something that you've gotten the hit and this is how you're going to... Like, is there a plan? Is there a strategy behind it? Or are you doing things out of attachment, out of trying to push that energy to make things happen? Are you trying to control things? Are you truly in a mode of surrender? Or are you trying to take control Thank you. And make things happen. Right. So this is kind of like the energy of what it is that I'm seeing a lot of. And I have to admit, I did get kind of whoo, swept up in all of that. And basically that kind of burnt me out. And then I went into that phase of that, of that questioning of surrender, of letting go. What is that? And, and asking all these questions. You might have noticed all of my posts over the last week were automated, 
right? Because I've been taking that time off to kind of ponder and just be present and just allowing for the flow. Right now, we're in this kind of space where, you know, you can, you can absolutely make things happen um, if they're inspired, right? But you're, you're, I'm noticing, like, a lot of people moving into the modes of frustration. And they're, they're spinning their wheels, no pun intended, because we're on the bike ride today. They're spinning their wheels, and they're getting nowhere. Oh, the only place that they're getting is frustrated. <laughs> And with frustration, you know, that can set you back down on the um, manifesting scale. It doesn't raise you up. It actually, when you're that frustrated and keep pushing and you keep pushing and you keep pushing and none of the doors open or maybe it trickles in a little bit, um, it just builds upon other thoughts that your ego comes in. Let me know what some of those ego thoughts are. Um, I posted on Instagram, you know, one of the, those ego thoughts after frustration is I can't, I can't do this. It's not working. Um, I don't know what else to do. And that type of ego thought is kind of the, um, reaction to the feeling of being frustrated, but it's also an ego belief. So if you start believing that you can't, then guess what happens? You can't, right? The universe will always prove to you exactly what it is that you're thinking. And it will show it to you. So it'll come up that way. So surrender and trust. How can you, in this zone of waiting, can you allow yourself to pull yourself in further in, in your divine mind, within your own intuition, your heart space, whatever it is that you want to call it, we call it the divine mind. How can you pull yourself in and align more, right? It's really funny, isn't it? How can you pull yourself even further in, in doing less? <laughs> doing less, attracting more, allowing more, right? So there's that um, mantra that's been going around TikTok. It's been rampant. It's been really, really fired up. And a lot of people are experiencing a lot of things. What I did notice this morning is that the way it is written, it does open you to receive. um, But it's uh, receiving everything. (laughs) It's like, woo, it's like an open channel for good and not so great things that you want. So it's kind of like, what is your mantra that helps you step off the edge. Of you had to fix that alarm. It was going off every 10 minutes. How can you step off the cliff? What can you tell yourself? What can you tell your ego? What is the mantra that you're going to use? When you get too far to the ledge, um, will you cross the line between being and aligning and into doing? So, you know what? I forgot to say that... Um, I'm not seeing any comments, and I apologize. I will go back and check the comments and make sure that um, I address any if there are any happenings, but I'm not receiving any. Um, So how do we walk off the ledge? What is it that you tell yourself? How do you come back off of it? Are you journaling? And here's the thing, like, I'm, like, up to my freaking ears with journaling. I've never been a journaler. Um, It's just one of those things that it's, uh, it's just sometimes it works for me when I'm like really in my head and then sometimes it's just total bullshit for me. Um, and I don't poo poo anybody else who uses journaling and you know, that's fine. If it works for you, that is great, but I don't think it works for everybody quite frankly. And, um, you know, anybody tells you that it absolutely works and it works for you and it will work for you if you do it. And that is the tool to use in order to manifest anything. I mean, I would run actually from a, teacher like that because that's a just a basic understanding misunderstanding that not everything works for everyone you know that may be a tool that you use that works for you but it doesn't work for everyone and that's why when we do work we offer multiple tools because I know that in one class um I'm going to give a I'm going to give a journaling assignment and that's going to work for a lot of people and they're going to make tons of money and then it's not going to work for, for another set of people because they're like, nah, I, you know, mm, 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 nah, I don't have that time. I don't want to do it. You know, it's just different for me. I'd rather sit in meditation, connect internally on my divine mind, and then observe the energy of things, which is great. And sometimes that's what I do. 
I sit in my divine mind and I ask questions and I listen to the answers, you know, so it's, it's different, different modalities, but how can, how can you create a place for you to step off the, the ledge and find that space, find that journaling prompt, find that mantra, find that energy stream, find that awareness, right? Because the more you hold on to something, the more you get attached to it, the more frustrated you get, the more you try to control things, the more you try to push it forward and make it happen, you're closing off that allowing flow. So the more you, you, you're looking at it and being like, I got to hit this goal and I got to do this and do this. And you're not checking in with that inner part of you as to maybe this is a good idea. Maybe it's not right. You strangle the flow when you're able to walk back from it. And like, I mean, like, look at this. This is just like open space, you guys. Like, this is just kind of like an indication of the space that I'm trying to create within my own energy, right? How do we open, right? How do we be present in this type of nature landscape? that allows us to let go of the clenching hold that we have around money, especially, or around moving, or around a job, or around a relationship, or around whatever you want. Look at the sun, you guys, so crazy. And how can we let go, align more, and be in that motion of co-creation with your own inner being, with your own inner light and get that direction, that guidance, that clarity of what it is that you need to do next. And real short here, and then I'm going to sign off. Um, I'll share a really cool example with you. Um, last year, I was in this mode of, I didn't make, here's the truth, I didn't make any money for three months. Zero dollars. Like, zero dollars and that happens you know at least it happens in my business um at times I, last year was a hard year for me and um i had a lot of things that i was going through so i wasn't really in the mode of um selling marketing being on the computer every day it was in this process of healing and i sat did a lot of my bike ride and i sat here and i asked soul spirit you know, what is it that I need to do today? What is really going to help me move myself forward and, you know, start getting back into the groove and start allowing money to come in? And interestingly enough, the guidance that I received was get on your bike and go for a bike ride, which for a lot of you might seem like, wait a minute, that's not like, that's not going to help. How is that going to help me make money? I'm not communicating with anybody. I'm not talking with anybody. Like, how is that going to happen? Well, at that moment, there was no flow. There was no way for any of those people to enter into my sphere of awareness because I was so closed off and strangulating the flow that in order to be able to have that happen, we had to open the flow. And for me, all of this here opens the flow. And within a couple of days afterwards, I got um, messages from two, two people who wanted to work with me privately in my top high-end ticket pricing. And then um, I launched a group and we had, um, we did a class and that all happened within about a couple of weeks of opening the flow, opening the flow. So thank you. The guys are reminding me that I never shared the mantra with you. So the mantra is actually uh, down here in the live stream. It says, I don't chase, I attract. Um, everything that is mine will simply flow to me. And I, tweak that a little bit um to say i don't i don't attract i allow right so i allow and everything that was meant to meant to be mine will simply overflow to me and so the first one for me sounded just a little bit limiting so i was like well how can we make this more expansive so i'm allowing um i'm allowing for overflow so play with that this week let me know what you thought um of today's bike ride. I take a bike ride like a couple of times the week and um, every now and then while I'm driving and I'm allowing for the flow to come in, uh, spirit does drop in like these 
little nuggets of awareness and I love to just stop here, take pictures and talk. So if you found this to be helpful, maybe we'll just make it like, you know, spirit bike riding <laughs> with some tracks or something. We'll pop in here every now and then, usually in the morning, um, before you get your day started so that you can have like this kind of like boom awareness and then move throughout your day. So um, let me know what you think. If you um, got any ahas from it today and um, I hope you enjoy your weekend. It is Friday. Yay! So I leave you with this question is how can I make space for more allowing today? Or how can I move into greater states of overflow for myself today? And see what you get. Ask the question and see what you get as an answer. And then type it in the comments. And the real challenge would be, can I go out and actually do that and release those attachments to the money and create more flow so that it can come in a little bit more easy? So things that, thank you, guides are like, things that, you know, be aware of, you know, you're your essence energy might give you things like go walk your dog, go play with your kids, go get ice cream, go for a drive, go work out, go sit by the lake, go to the beach, go to lunch with friends. You know, the things that you might be given may not seem as if they're directly correlated to what it is that you're actually trying to do, which is, you know, build, you know, bring in a client, sell more products, you know, um, book your courses or whatever, but how, but those, all of those things are helping you get your hands, pry your hands, your fingers off of your flow of money and allow, open that streams of allowing in. So with that, I had a brilliant idea this week, which I think I'm going to do. I'm still planning it, figuring out when we're going to start. But many, many years ago, I did a co-creative money program with the consciousness of Abraham and we called it mystic money shift. And it was very mystical. It's done very differently. There's no energy program out there because like this, because we use the higher dimensions. Um, it's not all, it's mindset work, but higher dimensional work. We teach you how to use the higher dimensions to manifest in this one. So it's a very different money program than anybody else is doing out there. Um, and I haven't touched it in about, so we did in 2015, so in about seven years. I haven't touched that program in seven years. And everybody who does that program manifests something or opens their flow to allowing 100% all the time, all the time. Like there's nobody who's ever taken that course who's never had anything happen. So, you know, I'm pretty confident in this course. I love this course. Um, but it is old, so I went back to um, looking at it, and I have, like, really dark brown hair dyed, <laughs> tons of makeup on, you know, it's, it's just dated, not old, thank you, my guys are like, it's dated, it's dated, it's right, it's dated, and since seven years ago, I mean, I've learned a lot about manifestation and opening and allowing and surrendering and trust and all of these things that I did not have awareness or... Um, as much mastery of seven years ago. So I think what I would like to do is run that program again live. Live. Like all over. Like it's the same content and material, but an entirely different way of going about it. So it's kind of like, I can't redo, but I'm going to do it start over. Start over. And here's the thing that I'm thinking as well, is that instead of just recreating it, I think I just might keep the program as a bonus. So it's like you would get the old program, which you can absolutely work with all the tools. And then you get the brand new live version of what we would be teaching on a regular and live basis. And I'm actually kind of excited about that because the vibrations and the frequencies of the live is even higher than the one we did in 2015. Um, which was really high at that point in time. So I think I might do that. If that is of any interest to you, let me know in the comments or DM me. I'm putting all of the final kind of thoughts together. I'm thinking we might start it in the middle of September, 
like right before Christmas even so that we, people can start allowing and making more money right before Christmas time, I think, or holiday time. Um, and just allow people to really kind of bring all of that in for that time. Um, I have no idea what pricing is going to be, to be honest. I'm just being honest. But I think it's going to be like five modules live, q and A. I mean, the regular thing that I always do. Um, but let me know what you think. Using the higher dimensions. If you know me, it's, um, you know, we always put a flare on the mystical. So it will contain higher dimensional work. And some ways in which to identify some of where you get stuck um, in your mind and how to release that, right? So very practical work. If you're a journaler, we'll throw in some journaling prompts and exercises for you. Um, maybe we'll even include a planner or I'm thinking out loud or a journal. Maybe you just create a journal or whatever. Anyway. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm thinking. I'm moving into a greater sense of surrender and trust, opening to allowing. So as I'm moving into that space, I always like to pull people with me. It's like, let's go. Let's do it. And the guides are, are constantly showing me things on a daily basis. So um, it's kind of like next level manifestation. Next level you is what we did this year which is phenomenal. That program I just absolutely love, but I think I'm going to do it with just private clients. But anyway, I'm talking out of my, it's more personal development and manifestation and really um, meditation work, visual meditation guidance and manifesting in a different way. This mystic money shift is more intentional. It's more more connection, more connection, more surrender, more trust, more alignment is I guess how I would classify that. Next level you is more upgrades, more mindset. I mean, you've got to be at a specific level in order to take next level you, right? You have to be on that precipice of jumping into your next level. Mystic money shift anybody can take. Anybody can take. Any level, which is what I love. And be able to experience the flow and the allowing and the benefits of that. So that's our plan. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday. The weather here is so gorgeous. I can't believe it. Um, reach out. Let me know if you're interested. I'm going to um, keep like a waiting list right now. Um, if you contact me and you're on the waiting list before I launch it, um, I'll give you a special discount code um, for when we do launch it. Um, but let me know if you're interested because I think that's where we're going to go next. And um, who doesn't want to make more money for the holidays and, who doesn't want to learn how to, you know, really work with the vibrations of surrender and trust? I mean, those are like power codes, right? They're like power codes. Surrender and trust. I mean, if you can get that, you can master that, man. Like the whole world will just open, open up for you. All right, you guys. Have a great day. I will talk to you soon. I have to go back on my bike and head on out. But before I do, I'm going to give you this beautiful sunbeam of light to kind of begin your day with here it is is that incredible or what a little bit of christ consciousness and the mystical science to begin your day and and that's about it all right you guys have a fantastic weekend talk to you soon bye, -bye.